Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. This is video 5 for part 4, the analysis process, introduction to data flow diagram. In this part, we will focus on how to build a crude matrix and how this can be used as part of our physical data, data flow diagram design. Our expectation for this video is all students should be able to understand the difference between logical and physical DFD. We expect you would be able to create a logical DFD by identifying all of the entities, data flow, process and data stores and will be able to create a DFD up until the child diagram. From the previous video, we can see that physical DFD are often more complex than logical DFD. This is because many of the data stores that is present in the system. Thus, one way for us to create the physical child diagram is by applying the crude metric where crude metric is used to identify activities that must present in the system. Again, it is reminded that before you watch the video, you must be able to create your own logical and physical data flow diagram. If you are still having problem in this, it is advised for you to watch back video part 1 where it will consist in identifying the entity data flow process and data store video part 2 where it consists on creating the DFD for step 1, 2, step 3, step 4 video 3 where you will be able to identify the DFD errors and also Video part six, part sorry, video part four, where it will consist on step six, how we can change from a logical to a physical DFD. What is CRUDE? CRUDE is the acronym for create, read, update, and delete. These are the activities that must be present and in a system for each of a master file, where we represent it as a data store. A crude matrix is a tool to represent where each of these processes will occur in the system. This is an example of a crude matrix. A crude matrix should consist of activities and also files that is involved in the system. We can see the activity as the processes that is identified for the system and the file as the data store that we will create for the system. One example on how to read the crude matrix. For change customer order activity, we can see that there's RU or read and update process that will happen to the data store customer. Also, we can notice there's a crude process that will happen also in the change customer order activities where the activity should be able to create, read, update and delete the data for order details. Another way where we can model our event for a DFD is for us to create what we call as an event modeling table where the input flow from an external entity is sometimes called as a trigger because it starts the activity of a process. This event will cause the system to do something and it will act as a trigger to the system. Thus creating an event 
response table is one way to analyze each event and all the data that is used in order for easily for us to create a data flow diagram. Every row in the event table will represent a data flow fragment and it can be used to create a single process on a data flow diagram. This is an example of an event response table for a system of internet storefront system. Based from this event response system, we will be able to create a DFD that will correspond to the event response table. Now let us have a look on how we can transform from a event response table to a data flow diagram. As you can see here, in the event response table, you need to identify what are the event, the source of the event, what will trigger the event, activities that will happen in the event, how will the activity respond to the event and also what are the destination when everything has been done by the activity for a certain event. Here, it is much easier if we can see that for the source and the destination is representing the entity. The event itself can give you clues on what can be for the processes. For an example, one row of event can give us information on what will happen in each of the processes. Example, event customer logs on is represented by process 1 with the name of get customer sign in. The customer browses items at web storefront can be represented in process 2, browse item records, and the event of customer places item into shopping basket at web storefront is represented in process 3, add customer item. The trigger and response is associated with the activities and this can give us information on what are the data flow and the direction of the data flow itself. Let us see an example. For customer places item into shopping basket at web storefront, this will be representing process 3, where this process will be triggered by an item that is being purchased of a customer and this will happen in, in, in process 3. So in details, in process 3, we know that um, the first activity that happens here is to store data on order detail record where this is being represented by the order details. The second activity is to calculate shipping cost using shipping table where this is going to happen or is going to be associated with shipping rate data. Third, update customer total and this one will happen within the customer record. And fourth, update item quantity on hand will happen or will update the item master using the item record data store. The activities here can also give you clues on what on how you can explode process tree into its child diagram. So after the, ha the activities that has happened in process 3, the process will actually give response to the customer 
by giving them what are the items that has been purchased through our web page. And that is how you identify or you use an event response table to create the individual DFDs for each of the process. In short, if you, uh, you can see that there are six events here, means that for this internet store from front system, it should have six processes where the processes can be represented by the event. It has two entity. It has one entity, the customer, where the both of the enti uh, where the entity will act as the source and destination of the system. So what's important in this topic is in order for us to make sure that we are able to create a good physical DFD, we should be we should create a crude matrix where this crude matrix will help us to create an event response table and by using this re event response table you will be able to create a data flow diagram specifically a physical data flow diagram this is the end for part five i'll see you in part six thank you